Hey guys, as here at Shield Canine. And uh, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about resource guarding. Preventing resource guarding. Dealing with resource guarding. Now contrary to popular belief, resource guarding is not a learned behavior for the most part. It's primarily a genetic trait. Some dogs, some lines carry it a lot. Um, and no matter what you do, you'll see the puppies exhibiting that behavior towards their handlers, towards other dogs. Resource guarding is probably the most common reason that you see people getting bit. I, you know, I deal with a lot of behavior cases here, and by far is the most common situation um, for handlers to be bitten is, is in resource guarding. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things, okay? Resource guarding, like I said, it's a genetic trait, but you know what makes it worse? Conflict. Conflict makes it worse. And you know how people cause conflict with their dog and food? They cause conflict by trying to fix the problem. They see a small thing. Maybe the puppy's growling over the bowl or something. So you know what they do? They do stupid things like this. They do this kind of stuff. Oh, are you okay with me putting my hand in the bowl? Dumb stuff like this, right? Now, this dog doesn't have resource guarding. If, if he's prone to guard anything, it might be a little bit toys. But again, me and him have a real close understanding of what is and is not acceptable. But, you know, his parents, neither of his parents resource guard. It's not in the line, um, you know, so it's not so common for, for, for um, I'm, not, I, I'm not surprised, you know, I can touch him. He doesn't like it. You know, you can see how fast he's eating, right? This isn't good what I'm doing. This isn't helping him. It's not avoiding the problem. But I see so many people, they got a puppy that maybe is showing some stuff, whether it's with bones, toys, with food. And in their attempt to avoid the problem, they make it way worse. Because they're constantly putting their hands there. They're constantly trying to prevent the problem by, you know, getting the dog used to you touching, you know, his stuff, his food, his bone, his whatever. But you know what you're doing? You're making his worst, his worst fears come true. He's afraid that you're going to mess with his stuff. And what are you doing? You're messing with his stuff. That is not going to fix the problem. So there are a number of ways to address resource guarding. But you know what? The best pre, um, way to address it is to prevent it. And the way, best way to prevent it is to reduce and remove conflict. Now, there's going to come a time when you need the dog to let go of stuff. There's going to come a time when you need the dog to, to leave something. And I'm not saying that you can't do those things. You absolutely can. We do it here all the time. But you are not going to fix any problem by taking your dog's bones away. You're not going to fix any problem by taking your dog's food away. Now, I'm going to show a clip right now of a dog that we just got in here that we're training for resource guarding. Um, and you're going, to see, uh, you're going to see a little bit of his behavior. And I'm going to give you guys kind of an idea just to kind of get you started down the path of how to prevent this common problem. And the biggest thing, guys, is remove and reduce conflict as much as possible. Get your hands out of the damn food bowl and stop trying to take your dog's bone away. Be smart about everything that you do and think about how you're going to do it in a way that minimizes conflict. There's going to come a time when conflict is necessary, but if your dog's only interaction with you is conflict, well, you're going to be in for one hell of a journey. So my suggestion, minimize, reduce, and understand what you're dealing with. This dog here, I can put my foot, my hands in this food bowl. Doesn't, it's not going to cause any problems. Now, if I, you know, a lot of people, they think, oh, well, I did that with five of my dogs and they weren't resource guarding. Yeah, do that with a dog that resource guards. See how well it works out for you. It's not going to prevent anything. It's just going to make it worse. Anyways, watch this clip. Maybe it'll give you some ideas. And uh, I think I'll do something more comprehensive on resource guarding later. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, guys, I'm gonna give you guys a little hint, okay? A lot of people, when they have a dog, they're resource guards. Their solution to the resource guarding is to mess with the dog, forcing the dog to constantly give up what he's got. That is not the solution to resource guarding. The solution to resource guarding is to remove the conflict, teach him what is and what is not allowed. So I'll do things like approach the dog, and as I approach Mark, chip, throw a piece of food at the dog and leave. What do you think that's going to do to him? That's going to teach him that just because I'm approaching doesn't mean I'm approaching to take his thing away. All right, so I'm going to do it again one more time, and I'm just going to leave him alone. Chip. All right? Now, that doesn't solve the problem, but it sure goes a long way to start building a little bit of uh, uh, trust and removing some of the conflict that the dog has in relation to people approaching him when he has stuff. You know, so there, it's, it's just part of the solution. It's not all of the solution.